You're about to meet artist Henry Watson, whose art is as unique and fascinating as the man himself. Is it like music to your ears? Henry Watson crafts art like few others in the world. It's called a lost art, you know, but you know it's not lost because everywhere you go now, you're going to find it's a Watson somewhere. <laughs> a Watson is a hand-chiseled, hand-painted, three-dimensional piece of Louisiana history. What I created in my works is a history lesson. I like to tell people of the days gone by. Days like the ones he shared and cherished with his grandmother. I'll tell you what, the best thing happened to me was I stayed with my grandmother. You know, not only did she teach me how to deal with people and how to appreciate your surrounding and to make do with what you had, you know. So it wasn't all of the fancy things because she never had all that, but she took the simplest things and she lived off it and she was the happiest person that you ever can imagine. She was legally blind, so Henry became her eyes. As they traveled the back roads of Point Capi Parish, he described the scenery. In the process, he developed a keen sense of detail in the beauty all around him. To become good and successful, you do what you know. And what I do know is Louisiana. So I do and I capture what's in Louisiana. Things that I've seen, things I know about that I could put in my carbon and tell a story. Henry's art carvings are in homes that range from former governors all the way to the Vatican. Here's a letter from Pope John Paul II thanking Henry for the carved portrait he did of him on his trip to New Orleans in 1987. The priests say, we don't get a chance. We don't have nothing written from the Pope. You know, so you got a rarity. Henry's a rarity, too. He's as energetic as he is engaging, gregarious as he is gifted. You have an infectious personality. Where does that come from? Well, I don't know. People say to me, they say, I love your art, I love your work, but I really love you. So yeah. whatever I got, I don't want to lose it. <laughs> I want to keep it. <laughs> His friend for nearly 30 years, Gene Seneca, remembers the first day they met. The first me moment I met him, you know, he lived right across the street. I kind of waved a few times, but once we met, we became friends, been friends ever since. This is a beautiful selection of Henry's work that dates from 1981 to 2016. But it's not Henry's, it's his dear friend Gene's. And Gene brought this over so we could see it. Because you'll never find more than one or two Watsons here. They've already been sold, or he's in the middle of a commission piece. They go that fast. This is the first one Gene bought on that very day they met. I first met Henry on Sexton Lane. I was selling firecrackers <laughs> and stopped and he, and he sold it to me. I had a few dollars in my pocket, so I bought it. And after I purchased it, it was a, a very good price. I told him, now you got to start putting a price on them, old buddy, because he pretty <laughs> much gave it away. What he sold to Gene for $40 then goes for more than 400 today. And I knew it was a great deal, even though it was the first one I ever saw, because like Henry, I love old cypress, old growth cypress. That's the whole key. Cypress is the only wood Henry will carve on. It's soft grain, straight lines, and history make it irresistible. Cypress wood, these trees was cut down out the swamps. They could be two, three hundred years old. They cut these trees down, took them to the mill, put them into boards, they built houses, the sharecroppers, cabins, barns. I come 150 years later, tear down this old building that's falling down, and I turn it into three-dimensional carbon. So look at the history of the time. Mm -hmm. So the building I found was 150 years old, but the tree was probably 300 years old before they cut it. So look how many years into making that work. Henry first carved 40 years ago in art class at Livonia High School. 15 years as a youngster creating and carving, you had no idea what it would become, what you would do in your life. People said, you always wanted to be an artist? You thought you would be? No. I was just doing something every day because I love doing it. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, if you enjoy what you do and you do it enough, you're either going to get good at it or you'll quit. <laughs> <laughs>
Henry follows the same steps and principles in his art today as he did when he was a teenager. First, he sketches his design onto the cypress. And once you draw it out, then you start carving it three-dimensional. And the three-dimensional stages goes foreground, middle ground, and background. So as I carve and work, you'll see those stages starting to come out. And then when you see the finished product, you see how it all arrived. His tools are simple. Different sized, inexpensive chisels he buys at the hardwood store. And a wooden mallet he made by hand. My mallet was just a two by four. I cut this piece of two by four and I shaped it just for the right weight. So as I carve and beat on it, you don't overwork your hands, you know, okay. and you don't miss the chisel. This one, he's used the last 10 years. But look at the one that preceded it. He used this one for 20 years. I shaped it and made it, and look how the indention, that tells you, you know, how long you've been. <laughs> the years, the hours, the time. Boy, if I lose one of these, I'm like, you, you know, you're kind of lost. It's like a musician without his instrument, right? So people, see, and basically what I'm doing, I'm cutting along the lines. Yeah. That I, after I drew it out, this is the top of the house, and all this got to come out because it's going to be in the background. Okay. With every beat, he has to strike the right angle and depth. And see, while I'm doing this and I'm, I'm carving and doing, I'm thinking of like music, a song or something, you know, because so, I'm tapping, I'm making, so I get a little rhythm going. Uh -huh. And what I do, I'm entertaining myself so it don't feel like I'm working so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so you're starting to see the depth come out? I am. Are you conscious of the depth or are you just doing right. however you feel because, like it? Because, yeah, and you do it a little at a time. When I first was learning, I went, <laughs> through the back, you know. <laughs> you know. After it's carved and painted, it'll transform into a work of art. From the shingles on to the bricks, it's all in that carve, you see? Wow. All hand carved, from the boards on it. Oh. So you have to pay close attention to the details of yeah. everything, see? From, and, and, so and you like don't want to miss out on things. And the moss is incredible, yeah. too. Yeah, see? And everything got the 3D, all of it, the 3D is in there. That's the closest thing to real life you're going to get. It's like looking out the window. Henry now sells his art for $6 a square inch. So this large 33 by 27 inch piece would cost $5,300. But the frame would cost nothing. So you get the frame for free. Is that right? That's a little like, yeah. A little, a little like, yeah. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Right. It wouldn't be anything in Louisiana without a little lamp. Always lamp. Right. That really <laughs> makes it. Yes, ma'am. For this one, though, they wheeled and dealed. Jean walked away with the painting. Henry drove away with this 1951 four-door Chevy. Henry remembers the first piece he ever sold and the special woman who bought it. Lucy Paulange, I met her when I was 15, and she came to a fair festival, and she saw what I was doing, and she fell in love with it. She said, not just you painting and drawing, you are carving it. She said, that's special. You know, now I'm 15 and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm excited because I didn't know who she was at the time. And she said, I love what you're doing. I want to buy some. I said, you want to buy what I got? And I'll never forget, I think I sold the first piece for like $7. <laughs> and I was happy because somebody wanted to buy something I made. Mm -hmm. She said, continue doing it. She said, in the world, I'll be the past to your dough. Eight years later, Henry's art did go global. I got selected to put my work in the world fair. Ooh. And that opened doors because people came from all over the world to New Orleans to see what Louisiana had to offer. And my work started going, going, going. And they would go, wow, i never seen that before. From that point, I knew then, Henry Watson, you're making a niche in the world because people would call you from Germany. I, I never, places I never heard of or been. He's commissioned by people worldwide to do everything under the sun. Portraits, businesses, favorite musicians, alligators, pelicans, a streetcar named Desire, and Jackson Square, just to name a few. Even the History Channel commissioned Henry to carve a portrait of the swamp people's Troy Landry. Like seven, eight carvings for him, you know. I love it. And they pay you pretty good. The History Channel, one thing about them, they don't have a problem in paying you. And this was they, they was advertised when you see it coming on, and they did that all over New York, everywhere you went on big old buildings. Oh. 
When Hollywood actress Marky Post was in Henry's neck of the woods filming a movie, she saw his work and commissioned him to create a present for her husband. Now I'm doing a carving of their house and they built a house to look exactly like Rose Down Plantation. No kidding. I, I couldn't believe it. I said, you got a house up in North Hollywood of a southern plantation. She said, we always love it. We came down, we got all of the pictures and everything, we went back and built our house like Rose Down. She called me back when he was opening it up. She said, listen at this. So she was taking pictures. He was looking at it and he was crying, said he never ever had a gift like this. Henry has a gift with people too. I just watch Henry mingle with the people. He just touched my soul to see that happening. Mm. And somewhere along the way, I think I learned, learned that from Henry, is just being good to people, and it comes right back to you. It's just an amazing thing. Henry's love for people and Louisiana illuminates through his art. I'm looking for the lit back road, the lit church that's back in the, in the woods that you barely notice. Mm. And I start thinking, how many songs and hymns were sung in there, you know? How many people, you know, went there? I just, you know, and then I start to recreate, just recreate. So I capture all of that into the Cypress, you know? And I tell the story of where we come from, you know? Those old back roads all had a story, all those old cabins. If these old boys could talk, what a story they'll tell. Where does your joy come from? My, my big joy come from knowing that I could create a little bit of somebody's past. You know, I, I'm very passionate about my past and my grandmother and creating and doing, and it shows in my work. But everybody got a past. Everybody got somewhere they come from, or they got something they want to remember. And if I could take that and put it into a storyline, well, I just captured your, your legacy forever. If you'd like to contact Henry or just get more information on his work, go to itsawatson.com.